Impala were grazing through the forest. They didn't realize that less than 100 meters or so from them, the entire pride of lions lay concealed by the lush vegetation. As long as those lions made no movements, the impala were completely oblivious to the fact that they were there. When one of the lions moved and one of the impala caught a glimpse of him, it erupted with a bunch of snorting and alarm calls. They weren't sure what was there, but they were very focused. The troop of baboons were not so far away from the impala and immediately responding to the alarm call, they marched in to come and have a close look. Just an indication of how reliant these two different species are on each other during this period of the year especially. They came in and with a nice height advantage caught sight of the lions very, very quickly. A lot of quite aggressive calling, a mix of barking from baboons and snorting from impala. The lions clearly were the imposters in this area. Anybody who eats anything generally is scolded upon by the forest dwellers. The baboons were surprisingly brave and kept in getting closer and closer and bouncing around the branches, having a good look at the predators. The impala stood their ground and watched one of the cubs move out from the thicket towards them. Quite curious and sort of watching this clumsy cub moving towards them. And they allowed her to get surprisingly close. She gave a half-hearted chase and the impala just bounced out of her way. I suspect it was the impala noticing the body language and the cumbersome nature of this really young cub didn't really pose a threat and uh, they were able to almost torment her. even finished getting set up properly this morning when I became aware that there was a Eurasian wild pig making its way across the boggy ground towards me, snuffling as it came. It looked like it was drinking a bit of water from some of the pools there. Wonderful, real old shaggy specimen this was. Suddenly, around the corner came a magnificent stag, a sambar stag, and uh, he moved across in front of me to an area of rocks where the water was coming out. Actually, the head came up many times and stared straight in my direction. I thought, he's, he's onto me, he's gonna shoot off into the forest at any moment, but he didn't. While I was watching him, I became aware of something out of the corner of my eye and saw then that there were in fact two does that had followed him uh, to this uh, water. I can definitely see the patch on her chest, the hormone gland there that shows that she's uh, sexually mature. Eventually, suddenly, one of the does, I think, got wind of me and uh, she was already making off into the forest. I waited another hour and a half or so with just the, the lapwings for company, but uh, nothing else big came down, so I decided to call it a day.
We were surprised to find a martial eagle, one of the largest eagles on the continent, standing over its kill, a white stork. We felt somewhat sorry for the stork, as it had just come out of breeding season in Europe and had flown all the way south to warmer parts of Africa because of the abundant food source which is available following the summer rains. The sun kept on going behind the clouds, which made filming very difficult. But when it appeared, the eagle was bathed in sunlight and it looked magnificent. The martial eagle was ripping into the stalk with its powerful beak, feathers flying everywhere. It would stop every now and again to rest and cool itself and then continue. At one point, lifting the whole carcass and turning it over to expose a softer, more fleshy part of the stalk to devour. The most striking feature for me being its piercing golden yellow eyes, which stood out against its glistening feathers. The martial eagle wasn't going to leave the carcass until it had reached its fill, its crop growing with every morsel. A starling flew in and collected feathers for its nest. The death of the white stork creating new life for others. Jatan Island lies just outside Saldana Bay and is visible from Malchas Island, which we visited quite often. In the early 19th century, guano, or bird droppings, was seen as a valuable commodity. The South American Incas had used it as fertilizer for centuries, and the idea had caught on. More than 400 ships crowded the harbor to grab this white gold. Both islands have a small complex of houses built for these guano collectors and added onto when egg collectors then took over after the guano rush. Most are now in various states of ruin and are used only by the birds which have returned, but the history remains. Jatin may have been transformed with its buildings and series of walls everywhere, but the birds have returned in their thousands. Cormorants mass on the rocks, penguins traipse determinedly inland regardless of the walls, and oyster catchers scour the rocks for food. Gulls flock inland, and rabbits, bizarrely, also scratch out a living here, another relic of the guano hunters, a population presumably brought in originally as food, the meal that most likely got away. <laughs> 